In this video, we're going over how to use the Alcatel 3V for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile technology coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today we're going to go over the Alcatel 3V for beginners and walk you through all the basics of how to use this phone. Uh, this is for first time smartphone users, so either this is your first smartphone or you haven't upgraded in a long time and you just want to get acclimated with this phone, so let's go ahead and walk you through it. So first we always start with the buttons. So there are uh, buttons just on the right side of the phone so you'll find a volume up, volume down, and a, a power slash standby button. So just by tapping this button all the way at the bottom here, that will wake up your phone and put it to sleep. And if you hold down the button, it will prompt you as well to power off the phone. You do have to unlock the phone first, but then once it's unlocked, you can hold down and then hit power off or restart the phone right from here with these two options. Third option will allow you to take a screenshot with your phone, so that's how you do that. This is just the main volume up and down. Now if you wanna put your phone on silent or vibrate, just pay attention to this little bell in the corner. So either pressing volume up or volume down will bring up the bell and you can tap the bell. One time we'll put it in vibrate Two times we'll put a slash over the bell and that means your phone is on silent and it won't make any noise regardless. If we hold down that button again and tap the bell again, you'll see that your sound is now back on and if your phone gets a call or a text message, it will make noise. Now, this is the uh, what's called the lock screen. So to unlock the phone, you essentially need to put your, your finger somewhere on the bottom of the screen and just drag it up and that will usually unlock the phone. Now, if you have a password on the phone, you will need to put in that password. Now, mine is very simple, it's just an L. But whatever your password is, you would enter it on that screen and then it would unlock the phone. Now, this phone also has a fingerprint scanner on the back, so you can program your finger to unlock the phone as well. So you wouldn't have to swipe. You would essentially just put your finger on the button and the phone would automatically wake up and take you to this main screen. Now for setting up the fingerprint scanner, um, just again, because it'll make your life a little easier, you would just swipe up. Now, pause the fingerprint scanner for a second. Swiping up through on the main screen, just taking your finger and dragging it up the screen will take you to all your apps. These are all the different apps. Um, you can then go to the settings, and in settings, we can go, um, so this is the top of the settings here. Take your finger and just drag it up the screen to move down the menu and go down to security and location. And from here, we're gonna go to, it's gonna say fingerprint. And you'll tap on fingerprint. And um, because my fingerprint is already set up, it's asking me to put the password in. If this is your first time using the phone, it's actually gonna ask you to select a password or a pattern you wanna use. You can't use the fingerprint scanner to unlock your phone unless you have a pin or password set up. So you will have to do that first. And then it'll have you take your finger and just put it on the scanner a few times and that will unlock the phone and that will set up your finger so that you can unlock it with your finger. So that's as much as I'll say about that. I won't, won't spend too much time there, but that's how you set that up if you choose to use it. Now, let's go over navigating the phone and I'm gonna make one tweak to the settings just so it looks exactly the way yours does um, because the phone will let you customize a lot of the menus but I'm just gonna put it right back to how it looks. So when you first get the phone, this is how your, what's called navigation row is gonna look. So you have three buttons on the navigation row. You have a back button, a home button, and a what's called recent apps button. We'll start with the back button and how that works. So for example, if I were to go to the settings application, and then I were to tap on battery, let's say I wanna go back one screen from where I am now, I would use that back button, 
to take me back to the last screen I was on. So now I'm on this screen. If I hit the back button again, it's actually gonna take me out of the app back to the home screen. So that back button is just, it just takes you back one step. That's essentially all it does. Now, the recent apps button, this shows you all the apps that are currently running on the phone and any app that you recently opened. So I just opened settings, hence why settings is the first thing that comes up. And then I have uh, my call app and I have some other things that I opened prior to uh, the video. So if I wanna close out any of these apps that I had running, I'm just gonna swipe up. And that's how you close out everything that's running in the background. Now I've been using the word app. I wanna explain what that is in case you're not familiar. So app is short for application. Think of an application like a computer has programs. Computers have programs, phones have apps or applications. So if you ever hear me say apps, I'm referring to all these little icons that you'll see on the main screen. These are all just little mini programs that uh, go by the name app on a phone. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So anyway, we went over the back button. We went over the recent apps. Now one important note here is that every time you tap on any of these applications, let's say I go on Google Chrome, because Chrome is basically the internet for your phone. If you wanted to browse the web, you would go to this Chrome app here. Let's say I were to open Google Chrome. If I wanted to get back to the main home screen, I have to hit this middle button, which is called the home button. This little circle, if I tap this, it's gonna take me back to the home screen. Now, when you go back to the home screen, it doesn't, it doesn't close the application that you're running. That application, and in this case, it was Google Chrome, our web browser, this is still running in the background of the phone. So if I tap my recent apps, you'll see Google Chrome. An application will only close if you go here and you swipe up and actually close it. So it's important to note if you open too many things without closing it, coming here and swiping up, then you'll have a lot of things running in the background which could potentially slow your phone down. So that's just how these three buttons work. Back button, home button, recent apps. Now, next we have what is called the notification panel. Take your finger, put it at the top of the screen and swipe down. And what you'll see are two things. You'll see what are called switches. These little switches control various functions on the phone. There's shortcuts to a lot of the things you would use often. For example, you would wanna to connect to Wi-Fi at home or at a Starbucks. Uh, and you would need to use this switch. It's the fastest way to get to that menu to connect to a Wi-Fi network. So I can just simply hold down, or I can tap these one to turn it on and off. So if the button is lit up in green, it means that it's on. And if I tap it again, it means it's off. Now, to take it a step further, if I want to connect to a Wi-Fi network, I would need to turn it on to make sure it's green. And then I would have to hold down on that button for a few seconds and it would take me right to the settings menu. And then here I could actually look for all the available Wi-Fi networks and I could find one, tap on it. Let's tap a different one for this case. And then I would enter the password. I would just type in the password here and then hit connect. And that's how you would connect to a Wi-Fi network. So the fastest way is just swiping down from the top and looking for the appropriate switch. You've got your flashlight here, your hotspot if you wanna connect your internet to another device, battery saver mode, Bluetooth. And if I take my finger and I swipe down again and swipe to the left, you'll see there's a few more options you have available. Screen rotation, airplane mode, um, do not disturb. So these are other options you have that are shortcuts that can simply be turned on just by tapping these options just like that. So I told you there were two things you would see in this section we call the notification panel. So we went over the first thing, which is switches. The second thing are, are notifications. So based on the different applications you have on the phone, 
Um, for example, we have a Gmail application on the phone. Uh, I get I get notifications for that app. A notification is just like a new message. So for example, if someone sends me an email, I'm gonna get uh, a notification that, hey, you have a new email and here is the beginning of the email. So essentially that's all it does. This section is just gonna show you if you have any new messages or any new activity in any of your applications. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, how do I get applications? Well, so you'll have some applications, we talked about at the beginning of the video, you'll swipe up on the home screen and you'll see all your applications in this section. But you might say to yourself, well, I want more. I want to download Candy Crush or Solitaire or a slot app or music or a book. How do I get those things? Well, you'll need to find this application called the Play Store. The Play Store is where you download applications. It's also where you can buy movies, you can uh, get music, audiobooks, all different things like that. They're all found in your Play Store. So let's go ahead and tap on that. Now, for some of you guys, you're not gonna see this screen come up, and here's why. Um, the Play Store has to be connected to a Google account. So if you don't have a Google account or a Gmail signed in on your phone, it's not gonna take you to this screen. It's gonna take you to another screen that's gonna ask you to enter your Gmail address or your Google account. So if you don't have one on that screen, you'll see a button that says create one. You would tap on that button to hit create one and you will be able to set up a Gmail account and a password and then after it's set up, then it will take you to the Play Store. If you already have a Gmail and you just hadn't signed in yet, just type in your Gmail on the little box at the top of the screen, not on this screen, um, but again, if you're not signed in, you won't see this, you'll be on a different screen and that screen should be asking for one of two things, either into your Gmail account or Gmail and password or you'll see a button that says create a new account and then you would follow those steps. So all that to say, it will lead you to this place once it is set up. And here you can search for different applications for your phone. You may want to download Amazon because you want to buy things online. You can download Postmates if you want food delivery. You have all these different options. So you can scroll through here and look to see what they have or you can go to the top of the screen right here and in the top of the screen you can do a search for a specific application you want to use. So I can tap this and I can put uh, Candy Crush for example. And I can do a search and it'll show me Candy Crush. If I want to download Candy Crush I'm going to tap on it first. It'll take me to this screen and I'm going to hit install. Once you hit install, it's gonna download the application so it's on the phone. Now, notice that button, or I'll show you a different example here. So if I tap on this Candy Crush Soda, all you see is an install button here. If this was not a free application, you would not see a button that says install. You would see the price of the application and when you tap it, it would ask you to enter credit card information for you to to buy that application. So keep in mind, everything is not free in this store. Most things are free, but not everything. So if you see a price instead of install, understand you will have to pay for it, and I don't want you to be disappointed. Let's use our back button here. We're gonna go back one step. We're on Candy Crush. Now I can open up Candy Crush right from here by tapping open, or I can go use my home button, go home, and then swipe up and I'm gonna look for Candy Crush in my app drawer. And what do you know, it's at the very top of the screen in the corner. So I'm gonna tap on Candy Crush, hit optimize, and then it's gonna open the application and then I can start playing it just that easy. So that's how you download an application for the phone. Now one more little trick, if we go back to this little Play Store icon, we use our back button to go back to our main screen. You can come up to the upper right corner, click on the little uh, microphone, and you can say the name of the application you're searching for in case you don't want to type it. 
So maybe you're looking for a slot machine app. You can hit the microphone and say slots. And then it will do a search for slot applications and you can look through all these different options here. So that's how that works. And then follow the steps to download like we did in the other step. So the last thing I wanna go over, or uh, two more things. So I wanna go over how to make a phone call. So go to this little green phone application. You're gonna tap on the red button. This will bring up your dialer. And once the dialer is up, you can input your phone number that you want to call. So you can I have a phone number here. I can hit call or the green button and that's how you would initiate a phone call. And then we can go home. Now this application is your text messaging app. So we can go here, tap on this little plus in the bottom right corner, enter a phone number of someone you'd like to call, and then type your message, hi, and hit this button to send your text message. Now right to the left here, you'll see a paper clip. If you tap on the paper clip, it will allow you to attach a picture to your message so you can send someone a picture. So I'm attaching this picture, hitting OK. And then I would hit this little button here. This is the send button that will send the picture off as a text message. So this has been our quick walkthrough of how to use the Aquatel 3V for beginners. Hope you guys did find this video helpful. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know if the video was helpful and if there's anything else you'd like to learn and we'll try to make a follow-up video based on the feedback. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.